Jim, we have a question for the late night drive through and this question comes from Rob Reigns. Can you assess Ken Shamrock's WWE tenure? I feel like the promotion missed a big opportunity with him. On the one hand, Shamrock was arguably ahead of his time as a legitimate UFC champion in pro wrestling. On the other hand, his presentation always seemed like something that was better suited for the territories. What are your thoughts, Jim? Well, I'm not sure about that. His presentation, actually, his presentation could have been much better suited for the territories if they'd have presented him. Well, eh, let me start at the beginning. Uh, we've talked before about the fact that when we had Dan Severn and Ken Shamrock in the same place at the same time, they never even made a move to make the match. Um, but Ken was an excellent pro wrestler. He, I, I thought his promos matched him. Uh, he was authentic fucking badass personality, uh, but still, you know, could work and do shit. And, and he got over certainly very well, but not as good as he could have. If anybody in the company at the time had understood whether it be mixed martial arts or the fledgling UFC or what that was, or, or just were any in any way interested in presenting guys as real and legitimate. Uh, same that, that they've done, I guess, with Brock Lesnar and done it quite successfully. But 20 years ago, they didn't want to do that. Guess who I'm talking about was the big one. Uh, and Vince McMahon didn't really know anything about what was going on with it. You know, it, I could tell him Dan Severn and Ken Shamrock had drawn – a hundred thousand buys on pay-per-view for a, a fighting promotion with no television, but he couldn't compute that or think that that was in any way of, uh, you know, any kind of competition to the WWF or something that they could draw from. It wasn't on their radar. So, you know, Ken became one of the boys and he was a top star as one of the boys, but he could have been really set apart and, and made the world's most dangerous man in a serious way, but you can't have serious, to be honest, when the next segment has the fucking super soaker commercials, you know, so there you go. Do you remember the conversation or the meeting when you guys were thinking about bringing him in and how that all came about? Um, actually, no, he was, I'm pretty sure at the time that JR was in the, in the seat, as he would say, when, when they signed him. Uh, but I heard that we got him rather than we were trying to get him. He was already a got get when, uh, as I remember when I, when I heard about it, uh, but I was, you know, I was excited. I actually have videotape of me beating Ken Shamrock up in a wrestling ring. What? Yes. <laughs> because when it, it, when he was Vince Torelli working for South Atlantic pro wrestling in Charlotte after Crockett had sold to TBS and they'd moved out, um, he was Vince Torelli and then uh, Greg Price, I believe it was, ran Monroe, North Carolina with a battle royal and Jim Cornette and Stan Lane versus I think it was Bobby Fulton and Bambi uh, and uh, whatever the fuck else. And in the battle royal, me and Stan got some heat on Vince Torelli before eventually he eliminated both of us. So I've got videotape of me beating Ken Shamrock up. But then he had gone and had done the, the shoot fighting stuff in the UFC, you know, early shows and become a name after that point. And I would have, I would have brought him in completely different, with completely different look and personality, et cetera. But that was, well, not completely different personality, but his personality, but I would have just set him apart more and, and, you know, obviously come up with ways to play up the fact that he was as legitimate as anybody that we had at the time. He was brought in as a smiling baby face in many ways, even though he had the notoriety as being an ultimate fighter. He, of course, was the referee for Brett versus Austin at WrestleMania 13. How would you have brought him in? Um, I, I, and I, once again, uh, I don't know and can't remember what was in Vince's head at the time, cons just concerning Ken Shamrock specifically. But, you know, that, that was a high profile deal to be the referee in that big match. And the reason why is because he was a, you know, a real fighter, but it, at the same time, it, maybe they wanted to just feel it out and see if he got over. I don't know. But if I had the chance to use him, I wouldn't have brought him in and made him a referee. I would have done the old fashioned. We're building a dome of steel in Atlanta videos with this motherfucker has dominated and ripped the dick off of and beat over the head with everybody he's faced and he's a real badass and he's coming to the WWF and, and do a series of vignettes and bring him in and just let him beat the fuck out of people and explode. Like he, he had that fired up 
stance on his comeback and shit and just do shit like that, whether as a baby face or a heel, that might be the only thing to determine is how you bring him in to begin with. But, uh, uh, I would have done that rather than put him in somebody else's spotlight, even though it worked. There you have it. <laughs> Were you there when he left in early 2000 to go back to mixed martial arts? Uh, no, I was already back down here in Louisville. I obviously heard about it, but I was not on, on the scene at the time. And I guess one last question, because the territories were brought up, how do you think he would have done in the territory era, and where do you think he would have fit in best? Oh, my God. Well, I, you know, Eddie Graham, I mean, is, is, is Ken Shamrock is a modern-day Jack Briscoe, a young guy who excels in – uh, not just not at just amateur wrestling, but in a, a form of combat sports who he could have taken under his wing and groomed and made a legitimate fucking guy out of. So that would have worked. Watts would have loved him. Uh, he would have worked well in the Carolinas, just like a guy like Paul Orndorff did when Orndorff really blossomed in the Carolinas because of the high level of workers that they had in mid-Atlantic wrestling, you know, with the Flares and the Pipers and et cetera on down. So he was working with top talent every night. Um, Vern Gagne would have liked him because he always liked Olympians. There's a, you know, flavor of that. It, he would have done well in, I mean, it, it, in Memphis, uh, he might not have, he would have learned timing because he'd gotten a ring with Lawler. And as we had Burt Prentice on our, on the Jim Cornette experience recently, he said Lawler was a genius taking a guy who had seven matches and couldn't do anything and makes him look like the greatest wrestler in the world. Uh, but Ken was better than that from pretty much, I think from the start. So he never needed that treatment, but he would have got over almost anywhere. 